all know that Cars 2 is highly controversial. There are some people that love the movie, and there are some people that hate it, and then there's people like me who just love everything Cars related. But yeah guys, it's insane to see some of the debates that go on about Cars 2, especially when people pick Cars 2 against Cars 3, and you get these people that will go to battle, go to war for Cars 2, and then you got people who defend Cars 3 and say it's a better movie than Cars 2. But I think one of the major criticisms about Cars 2 that's pretty understandable pretty easy for everybody to wrap their mind around is the fact that there was far less racing and racing elements than in the first cars movie like it really diverged from what we thought cars was but that's kind of an abstraction that's becoming less and less tangible especially as we got the cars on the road here where racing is not really part of it at all except for like one episode and a couple little mentions here and there so is racing really what the cars franchise is even about anymore so that actually puts cars 2 in a little bit different spotlight at least in my opinion it makes it a little bit more palatable now i love how expanded the universe and all that stuff but it certainly does not have as much racing in it than before and i think that could have been alleviated i feel like you put a little bit more racing in it it turns out to be a much more agreeable movie for everyone because the racing stuff was very different but very exciting like international world grand prix you got the best of the best from the entire globe like that's really awesome i feel like they could have played into that more just shown a little bit more racing that's all you gotta do really just show a little bit more cool racing between mcqueen and francesco and some of the other contenders here and bam who knows that ron tomato score might have gone up by at least 10 percent because it just is more in line with the first movie. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Cars 2. I definitely should do like a full-on video about that, maybe do a live stream or something, but that is not what we're here to discuss today. Obviously, today, very special day. We have a fleet, the entire World Grand Prix racer fleet, all 11 racers damaged. They are crashed. They are wrecked, whatever you want to call it. Now, this isn't canon. Obviously, this doesn't exactly happen in Cars 2. Some of these racers absolutely do get damaged and they crash, but not all of them. Like McQueen doesn't, Francesco doesn't, Lewis, Jeff Corvette. They actually never get hit by the camera. They never crash, whereas everyone else either gets hit by the camera at least once or they crash. Actually, everyone only got hit by the camera once, but some of them crashed multiple times. Like, you know, Miguel got hit at Tokyo, but then he also crashed at Porta Corsa. So yeah, we're going to review all these amazing customs by Sensei Luminous today. Obviously, she was the one that did all of the next-gen Piston Cup Racer customs that I reviewed over the summer. So definitely check out that video. I'll leave the link in the description below and card session pop-up in the top right-hand corner. Those are all incredible. And obviously, these are, I think, even better just because of the unique aspects to them. Like Whereas all those other ones are like one of two models. Here, they're literally very, very unique. And so she was definitely able to put her heart and soul into all of them and make them each very special. And again, I want to emphasize this does not happen. Like there are people on the next gen Piston Cup video who were like commenting like that racer doesn't crash. Like, why did you make a custom of that? Like, what are you doing, Bozo? And I'm like, come on, it's just for funsies. Eventually I'll have all of them, hopefully, like literally every racer damaged. And so clearly that's not what I'm going for. And People comment, I swear, even on my old, old, like, Cars 1 Piston Cut Racer damage video that, like, I'm missing a bunch of Piston Cut Racers. And it's like, well, duh, I obviously don't have them all here. And I find it so funny how people comment on that video because they'll be like, oh, you're missing these two. And I'm like, you do realize I'm missing, like, 20, right? <laughs> it's so funny because they make it seem like, yeah, you forgot Spearman. Actually, that's not one of them. It's like, you forgot Tank Coat. And it's like, <laughs> well, you forgot to tell me that I forgot all these other ones too. Sorry, a little side rant there. I just find it funny. But we're going to start here with Lightning McQueen with Racing Wheels. Obviously, the World Grand Prix version of Lightning McQueen. Now, some of the cars that Sensei Luminous uses are from Thailand. Some are from China. It all depends on what was easiest to get our hands on. I think some of these I actually sent him to use, and this might have been one of them. So I love <laughs> this guy came back to me. He has returned to the abode. So obviously the expression has been changed a little bit here. He looks a little bit more determined, a little bit ticked off. 
because he got whacked. Now, Sensei Luminous actually did it, so it's kind of like a photo finish between Lewis and McQueen here because Lewis has red paint rubbed off onto him and McQueen has black paint rubbed off to him and both of them obviously also are super damaged on these two sides compared to the other sides they're almost immaculate so I love how he kind of created his own like little culture and little story within these customs and obviously I'll try and tell that but this is certainly the main kind of centerpiece of it all this Lewis versus Lightning battle now, it's extremely difficult to obviously change some of these expressions because they're smiling. Like with the next gen Piston Cup racers, they're already frowning, which is like what you would be doing if you got absolutely destroyed on the track, right? You're not going to be smiling, right? So with some of these and eventually the Cars 3 Piston Cup stock cars, going to be tough, you know, because you ah, can't change like a smile. It's not that easy to turn, you know, your frown upside down or, way, or the other way around. And that is one of the cases here. But he did a great job. I like the expression a lot. And I think it's appropriate because, you know, as they're battling, you know, they're also kind of scratching up against each other. And McQueen's just dialed in here. So you can see the black paint rubbing along the fenders here. The light year tech's completely worn off of the tires. Almost all of his decals here. Well, not all of them, but they're pretty screwed up. <laughs> it's perfect. This is chaos, and I love it. Order is chaos. Chaos is order. We're getting philosophical today here on the channel. But yeah, I love this, obviously. Just look at the detailing he does. Like, it's not just random. Like, I'm going to take a hammer to my car and call it a damaged custom. <laughs> People do that. This is precision. This is calculating. This is measured damage. I mean, just soak it all in here. Look at how great those black streaks are. Really a big fan of it. But McQueen is pretty immaculate besides that, obviously. He's got a little bit of wear and tear up here, but I think that actually might have been there before. He just got into it with Lewis on the track. McQueen's got a dark side to him. He got a little violent out there. So yeah, you could see another quick little comparison here with the regular World Grand Prix Lightning McQueen, which they release so much these days from Thailand, obviously. So much! Throw in the Hudson Hornet Piston Cup McQueen for a year. I don't think it would really matter all that much. I'm not sure that the World Grand Prix version is that much more popular. You know what? I kind of take that back. The World Grand Prix McQueen is really cool. I remember when it first came out in 2011. I was going nuts for it. I mean, he's got a new spoiler. He's got flames and stuff like that. So, I don't know. Maybe it is that much more exciting. I honestly wouldn't be too surprised. So, here you have Lewis who also has a very dialed-in expression. Of course, you've got the gap in the teeth, which is identical or, you know, a call back to Lewis Hamilton in real life. Now, it's funny. Lewis Hamilton's like one of the few Cars characters ever to not have like a carified name. You know, like they literally just took his name exactly how it is in real life. Whereas, you know, with Jeff Gordon, they made a Jeff Corvette because he's a Corvette. Super clever. Super iconic, too. But yeah, you can see he's really messed up here on the side that he was battling with McQueen. You have the red scuff paint all along his wheel wells here, the fenders and whatnot. The number two World Grand Prix logo there with his Granada United Kingdom half and half flag also scuffed all the way to the back. Yeah, even his tires like taking some damage. You can see that the tires not pristine. So you can see that's what it's supposed to look like. Lewis is one of the cleanest designs for any of the World Grand Prix racers. Like he doesn't have any like other random decals on him that point toward like a league that he's in back in his home country, like you know Raul Serul or Max Schnell do. And on the back here, you can see everything's pretty much pristine. And then same thing here on the other sides. Awesome. So there is Lewis for you. Who do we go to next? Let's go to Miguel. Miguel is one of my favorites, if not my favorite of the bunch here. And usually I say my favorite for last, but I haven't really taken much of a look at these, honestly, at all. Like I got them in a couple weeks ago, probably a long time ago. I probably got them in over a month ago by now. 
I didn't open them for weeks, then I opened them, put them on display real quick, and then I just took them back down to do this video. And Miguel's the one that just sticks out the most to me, and I think it's pretty easy to know why. The expression is altered massively, and Sensei Luminous went to the effort to making Miguel Camino accurate because that is something that Mattel has struggled to do for, what now, 12 years years yeah that's pretty wild to think that they have not corrected miguel in all this time if you guys are wondering what i'm talking about miguel does not have a red spoiler in the movie it's black in fact as you could see and also he should have red trim around his wheels just like sensei luminous added there so really big fan of this i think he also used yep a thailand miguel camino so it's a little bit shinier a little glossier but you can see he really went to some extra effort here to change the expression because, I mean, Miguel's got a super wide smile there. He looks super chill. And again, you take this amount of damage, you ain't going to be super chill. But yeah, I'm a big fan. I'm loving how he messed up the eyes there. He just is like squints and is like, oh, I can barely see. I probably got him a black eye after this. Oh. He's also kind of like quenching his teeth. He's, you know... There's a good word for that, but yeah, he's clenching. There it is. He's clenching his teeth off to the side there. He's probably like lost it. He's probably about to spit one out. You know, those, a lot of action movies do that. You know, you're battling around and then some guy just spits out a tooth. And like, he doesn't even care. Like, yeah, I don't need that tooth. I'm always like, geez, if I lost the tooth, I'd be so mad. But yeah, he's got a lot of hood damage here. He's even like indented here. Look at that. He's even like indented along the front bumper there. Wow. Miguel has taken a thrashing. Absolute thrashing. Look on the side here. McQueen and Lewis, honestly, were not that bad at all. Just on the sides. But already we can see Miguel's gone it much worse. Absolutely down to the bare metal here. It looks like almost for some of it. Right up the side here. I think that's bare metal. It looks like there's a little purple in there. So maybe he brushed up with Max Schnell. It's very possible. We'll see when we get to Max maybe. But yeah, soak in that nice damage. I love the red trim as well along the rims. Looks really good. Same with the black spoiler. Really impressive how he was able to paint the spoiler black without covering up the World Grand Prix text on it. That was really cool. It's not like he... Yeah, I don't think he did. Yeah, he didn't like completely paint it black and then like reapply a world grand prix decal no he didn't do that now the back of miguel is in pretty good shape so it looks like his caboose his wagon has stayed healthy but and yeah so his right side also is pretty good but yeah hood and his left side yeah they're down for the count he's feeling it too he's not happy look at that expression that's so good i love it love it so much all right, let's move on to Jeff Gore Vatier, who looks like he's lost a bit of a spoiler. Let's see what's going on here. This is a Chinese version of Jeff with a mouth plate. Wow, this is one of the earlier versions of him. Yeah, let's see here when this was made. Oh my goodness, the 51st day of 2000 and... Wait, 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 wait. No, the fifth day of 2011. Wow, that's insane. This is like one of the first Jeff Corvettes ever made. Corvette. Wow, I kind of feel bad that we sacrificed this one to the custom gods now. Because this literally is one of the first Jeff Corvettes ever, ever, ever made. Because what does that mean? If he was made on the fifth day of 2011, Cars 2 doesn't come out for another like six months, right? So they made this, held on to it, and then released it obviously in May when the embargo lifted. So that's pretty cool. Kind of historic. And then you can see my Jeff Corvette's a, another upgraded variant, but we're still not complete yet because I'll tell you in a second. But yeah, this is, looks like a 2012 version. This doesn't have a typical date stamp on it. It has a imprinting. I don't know. Well, I've never really seen, I guess that would be the 179th day of 2012. But as you can see here, he's a unibody now. He doesn't have the mouth plate, but he still doesn't have the Corvette logo that he needs to have there, which they eventually added. And you'll see it on every Jeff Corvette going forward, or at least hopefully. But yeah, I like what he did here with the expression. Now, Jeff Corvette's like the only World Grand Prix racer besides like Shoot to the Rokey. Well, Max Schnell is like kind of a stoical expression, but yeah. 
the only couple World Grand Prix racers that aren't smiling are like Jeff and Shu. And Jeff is one of the most intense looking World Grand Prix racers. I mean, he is like growling. He is mad. He is not screwing around on the track. So it was probably easier to make this expression where he's like, again, squinting his eyes. You can see the eyelid coming up from the bottom. So that's really cool. Nice little alteration there. You can see he's got a little damage alongside the front fender there, but most of it is concentrated here toward the back. What the heck happened to his tire here? Oh my God. It looks like it's coated in like ashes. But yeah, you can see just absolutely destroyed along here. Lots of scratches, lots of dirt too, like a lot of smearing here. But yeah, it looks like this tire got into something bad. It almost looks burnt. Oh my goodness, that tire has seen some better days. Yeah, something happened on this corner of Jeff because you could see also is missing a bit of his spoiler there. Jeez, I promise I didn't feed this to my dog. I promise. <laughs> it's like one way to damage your car is, yeah, feed it to your dog and then like pick it up in the yard a couple days later. <laughs> that was gross. But yeah, you can see on the back here, the damage continues. Oh my God, that is like bare metal. I can feel how raw the texture is there. Like, wow. That is insane. That's so cool. Also, he's got pretty bad on his left side or right side as well. Not quite as bad looking, but just also looks dirty, you know. Just looks nasty. And the tire's a little screwed up as well. Like this damage just looks so good and precise like look at those edges it looks so legit and not just like Rah! you know i'm just gonna whack my car around and that's probably what i would do like if i was told to like damage a car like i would i would struggle like i'd probably try and scrape it off with like an exacto knife maybe i'd try and do that i don't know that's why i have a customizers professionals like sensei luminous take care of that stuff for me you know in life you gotta surround yourself by smart people who are specialized in certain skill sets and then you just let them do what they're best at and you do what you're good at and that is how you have a successful business you guys don't need to go to college just come to the university of docket anyway here we have carla veloso poor girl she's taking it <laughs> honestly she doesn't look horrible she's probably made out the best i don't know if that's sensei luminous being nice or something but I would have just thrown the gender stereotypes out the window everybody gets thrashed but yeah I like the expression change here which is pretty difficult Carla has like some of the most limited expressions they did like change her up a little bit like kind of with the flame version here like I don't know not really she's still basically smiling when she has a blown engine which I find kind of stupid but her like eye box i guess you could call it is so condensed there that you can't change it up a whole lot so i do give them a little credit but they found ways to do it with francesco Brunelli. so yeah but yeah sensei did a nice job here with the mouth it looks like she cut herself or something squinting heavily but yeah her left side's fine right side's okay till you get to the back here and you can see that she's gotten chewed up here on the back right. Looks like scratching her leads to like this kind of green like base layer on there. Like look at that. It looks a little odd. Oh wow. Yeah. She's chewed up back here badly. The spoiler's a little. Yeah. The spoiler's also a little cut up. Wow. Didn't even notice. Carla also has a really clean design as well. Like she has no decals on the back, which is I think the only racer you could say that about. Well, I guess like Francesco Bernoulli and Rip Clutch Gonski, yeah, because they are you know the open wheelers essentially. So that's a little hard to do. But yeah, Carla, really nice back to her. But oh my god, look what happened here! It looks like a whole chunk of her like base has come off. Wow. It makes sense, actually. I do, yeah. I think what Sensei was going for here almost was, like, what would happen, like, after, like, the flames died down, after, like, she got hit with the camera, you know, because clearly, like, it heated up back here pretty good, and so things are going to look a little burnt and toasty, which they do. It looks a little ashy, and... 
there would be a little bit of damage. So in that sense, he did try and make this cannon. So dual purpose. So there was Carla Veloso. We'll set her aside. Let's go to Max Schnellsky. Max Schnell is like my least favorite World Grand Prix racer. Him, Raul, Nigel. Yeah, those are like bottom tier WGPs for me personally. I remember going in the cars too, thinking like, oh my gosh, I really hope that the World Grand Prix racers speak. And it only was like Lewis, Jeff, McQueen, and Francesco, obviously. And it appears I did not pull out the regular Max Schnell to compare him to. Oh my gosh, Disney Docket, you are such a noob. All right, perfect. Here we have the regular Max Schnell to compare him to. And as you could see, another one that obviously is not like frowning, he's not like growling like Jeff or Lewis, but he's not smiling by any stretch of the imagination. So it was a little bit easier for Sensei to alter this expression. You could see he's got the squinty eye treatment. Looking good. Now his left side's taking a little bit of a beating, nothing too severe. Looks like some blue scrapes there. You could see like a little bit of blue coloring worn off onto him. So maybe Raul Sarul gave him a good whack. Yeah, ah, Max is always like weirded me out a little bit. Like he's always had this like interesting texture. You could, you know, feel like the grooves in his body. I always wondered why they did that. It's like a very interesting looking shaped racer, like with these big like fenders back here. Look like staircases almost. On the other side, Max, he got worse. Like this side of the spoiler is a little bit screwed up here. Looks like it almost got shaved off. As you can see, like almost all the decals are like, worn down completely. Really nice. Although I'd have to say Max probably made it out even better than Carla. Like Max, he's squinting, but I think he's a little bit, he's feigning. He's being a little bit dramatic because he just got a little scrapage here on the left and a decent amount of scrapage there on the right. Certainly nothing like some of the other racers that have really taken it hard. So yeah, Max, you're being a little bit of a drama queen there, my guy. All right, let's move on to Raul Sarul here. I'm loving the expression. I haven't taken much of a good look at Raul until now. And yeah, I'm liking the expression on him. So let's take a look here at the front corner. That's, ugh. Wow, look at that. You can see like what the mouth plate plastic looks like underneath the paint. It's like this white color. Wow, he's all scraped up here on the hood. Yeah, he whacked somebody really good. Maybe he whacked Max like right here, like bam. And yeah, he is squinting. He's almost falling asleep. I do really appreciate how Sensei was able to get rid of that giant smile right there. Like he scraped it off. I think he like sanded it out or something. I think it was like, she was like telling me something that she almost sanded it like too much. And like the mouth play almost came off or something. I'm not really sure. But yeah, something like you could only stand it so far before like you damage the entire mouth play. I don't know, something like that. But yeah, wild. Really happy with how these expressions came out because I knew how challenging that was going to be. Now on the side here, you can see a bunch of scrape action as well. I love how it just looks like a absolute flurry of arrows almost. You can see that great array of lines. Really like that. All kind of converging up and pointing toward the side view mirror there. Looking pretty good here on the back. And a little bit of damage here along the bottom. Yeah, there's not. Yeah, Raul, <laughs> he got on all, almost all four of his sides. Nothing on the back, but yeah, he got it almost everywhere. Poor guy. Man, I do like this expression a lot. I'm a big fan of that. All right, who would you have left? Let's go Nigel Gearsley. Uh, where's my regular Nigel? I swear, if I didn't bring out a regular Nigel ear, I'm going to lose my... Bro, why would I do that? Oh my gosh. For whatever reason, I only pulled the flame version of that. And we'll get to that in a second here, but let's just start with these two. And you can see again... Had to do something with this gnarly looking smile. Just jolly old Nigel. Yeah, not today, my guy. Unless you use the flame version for the damage. And that actually could have been a good idea because this is a really good expression here. But yeah, 
Nigel's mouth is now like this jagged <laughs> shard of glass almost. Like he's like, Ur! he's kind of like tilting his mouth downward. Yeah, very interesting. I like the expression. Not as much as some of the other ones, but it looks really good. I like how he's able to match the color that he paints here on the eyes to the rest of Nigel. Let's see what happened to poor Nigel. What's the story here? So on his left side here toward the back, a little scrapage, a little dirt. This tire's got a little bit of that. What happened? Who had it really bad? Oh, the Jeff Corvette treatment where it looks all dirty and grimy and like burnt. You could like feel that texture there. It looks really good. Looks like the back is pretty much intact. The spoiler is bent downward a little bit. He's got a big spoiler too, so it's kind of out there in the open just waiting to get smacked. But yeah, you can see most of the damage is concentrated toward the back right corner here. He must have gotten whacked by something. Maybe shoot to the Roki because this is like some white, very like light paint that's rubbed off. And then you got the like dirt feature here again on the tire and whatnot. Nigel didn't deserve this, but Nigel is one of the ones that Mattel did release with flames here as I showed. And it's a really good expression. I like how he's looking off to the side. I love when cars are looking to the side, just gives them more personality. And he's got a good mouth there where he's kind of gritting his teeth and showing his little tongue there. But yeah, kind of a silly release, just added on these two pieces of flames. Released once in 2014 and then again in 2020 from Thailand. So kind of a weird, like I would never have expected like this to be a Thailand variant or like this isn't the Thailand variant, but I wouldn't expect that car in particular to get a Thailand variant so soon into the Thailand run. Like there are a lot of cars out there that still haven't gotten Thailand variants. You know, a lot of Piston Cop racers. There's cars like Leroy Traffic, Paddy, like Mario Andretti's assistant that I feel like are more prominent and like, oh, of course the lemons, Graham Acer, Professor Z still don't have anything like that. So that's a little surprising to me. But anyways, we're going to move on to shoe to the Roki now. Got my version of him. And yeah, he's got a little bit of purple paint here. So it makes me think that he scraped up with Max Chanel. Yeah, he's got kind of all over. He's got some yellow paint as well. So shoe must have been battling and bruising with a couple racers his expressions teed up nicely to make it into a distressed one because he's just looking nice and intense there i love how like the frown kind of like points downward i like that but yeah now he's got the kind of black eye action almost but yeah i do love how he's all scraped up here in the front i feel like that would make a lot of sense oh and also sensei luminous made the shoes Wheels accurate because they should have that red dot in the center that the Mattel version doesn't do. And look how much better it looks. Like it really adds to the whole design, in my opinion. So yeah, you got some purple action there. You got some yellow action here. The Japanese flag is almost completely destroyed here. Like the red dot, gone. The text, gone. Reduce the ashes. Oh, Shu doesn't have any decals on his back either, like Carla. Very elegant looking racer. Le Mans, right? Le Mans. Wow, he's got some gnarliness going on back here. It looks like he's been torched. I guess it would make sense as well, because I think Sensei was going for the flame, like post-flame action, which I'll show you in a second, because they did cancel Shu to the Roki with flames. But yeah, he's like all burnt. Yeah, that would make sense. Reduced to ashes actually wasn't super far off. And yeah, his tires also, you can see the axle is screwed back here. Look at that. Nice. I love how he was able to do that and still kind of make it like functional. Awesome. Yeah, the tires back here are a little messed up. But yes, in 2017, they were going to release really Shoot to the Roki with Flames, this chap right here. And they did not, unfortunately. Very sad, but I was able to get my hands on a canceled version, and you can see here are the flames. Not as crazy as Carla's, like hers are way bigger, but shoes are a little bit darker. 
So again, kind of a silly variant, but they were able to change up the expression pretty nicely. There is a variant of the cancel Chu to the Roki that has like the normal expression, but I think that's more of like a prototype. I just wanted to put that out there. And so you can see that like this, having the flames back here would probably lead to something looking like that where everything's just singed. So I really like that. Again, great attention to detail by Sensei Loomis. I think that's actually what he was going for as well with Nigel Gearsley and having the kind of torch things on either side of him. Awesome. All right, we only have like two left, I think. So, yep, we have Francesco Bernoulli. So I do want to point out with Miguel Camino, everyone does know that Miguel Camino with Flames was also canceled in 2017, just like Shoot to the Roki. So I wanted to show him real quick, but it does not look like Sensei Loomis went for like that kind of action, like having the burn signs, like the burn marks on either side of him. So, but yeah, I think Miguel is still my favorite for today. Here's Rip Clutch Gonski, who's my favorite World Grand Prix racer in general. I just, I don't know. It's probably honestly because they released him last and they took forever to release him. His launcher is like super rare. It was only released internationally. They still haven't done a mini racer. I guess they haven't done a mini racer for a lot of the racers, but I'm sure they'll get to him. You know, they've done Carla, Raul, Francesco. They've done Carbon Shoe. So I would assume that they'll eventually churn through all the World Grand Prix racers. Really hope so. I want to have a complete set. But yeah, this is another one that I really appreciate how he was able to change the expression. Like it looks really good, really believable. The mouth, you know, just turned into a. Yeah, he really did flip that smile upside down. Just kind of like sanded off the smile and put his own frown in there. And you could see, used a nice little coloring application there to make his eye look a little squinchy. But yeah, Rip took it bad up here in the front along his nose, along his like wheel guard here, whatever you want to call it. Oh man, look how chewed up that looks. Ooh, it's got some blue paint rubbed off onto it. Yeah, this fender took a beating here, that covering. Everything else though actually looks good. So Rip just, bam, just absolutely whacked something and he was able to escape unscathed elsewhere I also just like the color scheme on rip like he just looks like a fun racer I just like the design a lot yeah I love rip <laughs> he's still my favorite racer undoubtedly so yeah there's damaged rip and last but not least is Francesco I think Francesco is like the most character out of a lot of these I mean his like wheels all screwed up here and he's got like crazy expression so kind of why I wanted to save him for the end here's your regular Francesco Bernoulli so yeah you can see the expression violently different looks like he's got a black eye that could even be blood who knows <laughs> actually we know cars don't bleed I think it's like what's it called what is their like equivalent of blood anti-freeze maybe anti-freeze as McQueen comes into contact with almost in cars on the road. But yeah, Francesco's in a bad spot right now. This is a Chinese version of him. So again, sanded off that expression. I mean, just look at how different the noses look. Look at this one's like, and this one's a little bit like nice and rounded. Yeah, the tires are screwed up. Yeah, Francesco looks like absolute ass. Scraped up here on the nose. <laughs> Look at this. He's completely like lost this wheel guard up here. Oh my God. It's almost off entirely. This one's cracked. Oh, I love it. The axle's all bent. Poor Francesco. Yeah, he's not having a good day. He's not his cocky self. Now, I really do wonder like if Francesco ever crashed, ever crashed in his career. It would be a cool backstory or if like we ever revisit Francesco at some point down the road in the Cars universe. You know what would be cool is just to see like a timeline of all the World Grand Prix racers during their careers. Like, oh, this was their, their first win. This was like their rookie season. Oh, they crashed during this season. They were out for a while. They switched like sponsors here. Like stuff like that would really fascinate me. I'm sure a lot of people would be super into that as well. But yeah, guys, 
that is all for this video. I hope you enjoy it. Kind of a special event. Obviously, we don't do these things all that often because, you know, we got to keep them special. But I definitely think that, you know, following up the next-gen Piston Cup Racers, this was a great one to do because no one would expect it. Like, I think a lot of people were thinking I would go back to the Cars 1 Piston Cup Racers, maybe do the Cars 3 Stock Cars, maybe even do the Thomasville Racers. I don't know if I want to do those. It just doesn't feel right to damage them like that. But these... Absolutely fair game. There's way too many World Grand Prix racers on the pegs for the most part. Like, I know they did Francesco, Shu, Miguel this year, and obviously McQueen. Last year, I think they did pretty much everybody. So, yeah, it's great to sacrifice a few of them, repurpose them into something new, give them new life. And by the way, might as well use Toe and Owen here, even though he's practically, yeah, he's not usable. This thing's stupid. <laughs> There's no use in this thing whatsoever, but. Yeah, it looks kind of cool, though. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comment section below which one is your favorite out of the 11 here. If you say, I swear, if somebody says in the comments that I forgot, like, Frosty or, like, Vili Petrov or some stupid thing like that, I might lose my mind. But all right, guys. Thanks again. I'll see you soon for another video. Bye now.